Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in John chapter 3, verse 16, Amos chapter 2, verse 9, and Ruth chapter 4, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to have meat for our day. Lord God, show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, that kind of rhymed. All right, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is a that is beautiful, right? That is everything that we rest um, our head on, right? And, and the fact that he didn't send it his son to condemn the world the next verse for God did not his son to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and so um I always think of that second part of the verse because my daughter taught me that second part of the verse she would keep going and I would be like what and it, when I start to listen to it it really affected me and so it said for God sent for God so loved the world that means that he loved us and his love for us drove him to do something that started before the foundation of the earth, right? He knew that his son would need to be slain. And so um, if he was going to create us, if he was going to cause us to be in this earth, that he he, he was going to have to send his only begotten son. He was going to have to send his son to die. And so it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. There's no other son. He doesn't have Melchizedek is not his son. No one else is his begotten, only begotten son. Only Christ Jesus is his only begotten son. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Do you believe in him? Well, guess what? You can have eternal life. You have eternal life if you believe in him. All right. And so the second verse is Amos chapter two, verse nine. Yet I was yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars, and who was a as strong as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. So um, the Amorites are giants, basically, right? Um, it says whose height was like the height of cedar. So they were part of what the um, children of Israel were looking at when they went into the promised land to spy out the land. And the ones came back with a negative report. They would see these Amorites. They would see these people and they saw themselves as small right it made them it affected them and so the children who hadn't seen all of that and um and as well as Joshua and Aaron uh not Aaron Joshua and um oh goodness Joshua and the other guy <laughs> you guys know they went they were going into the promised land and they actually um Caleb thank you Holy Spirit uh they they went into the promised land and they were um they actually saw the land right and they weren't looking at the enemy they were looking at the land right and God knew that that was a key because we had to see the promise and not focus on that negative right know that God can conquer a giant just like he can conquer the walls of Jericho just like he can bring you across the Jordan just like he can bring you across the Red Sea there's nothing that our God can't do right and so he went on to destroy the Amorite before them right so when they went in to fight it was done it was like they were fighting anybody else right and so it says whose height was like the height of cedars and who was as strong as the oaks I destroy his fruit above and his roots beneath meaning that he destroyed every part of him right he destroyed anything that came from his hand and he destroyed um his his lineage his future 
All right. And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ruth chapter four, verse 11. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leo, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Apertath and be renowned in Bethlehem. So God is saying to us, you know, he's blessing us right not only is he blessing us he sent his son this is a wonderful package he sent his son so that we could have eternal life right and his son died for all of our sins past present and future we have eternal life and then not only that he's going to drive out our enemies from before us um, even the worst of our enemies, the enemies that try their best to intimidate us, he's going to handle that. He's going to drive them out and he's going to destroy them. Not only the things that come from them, but the roots that are beneath them that are holding them up. And he's also going to bless our house, right? Bless, bless our house with a bountiful blessing. This is a word from God. And this is letting us know that he is showering his blessings on us. Do we deserve it? No, we do not. But because of Christ's sacrifice, God is giving us this great blessing. He is blessing the bride. He is blessing the one who fears him. He is blessing the one who believes on his son. It says, then all the people who are at the gate and the elders, that's, that's everybody, everybody who's official, who has a say was there at that gate, right? It says, then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house, like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel, may you act worthily in Apertath and be renowned in Bethlehem. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for this blessing on us. We receive it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to rededicate their lives to God um, because you're off track somewhere or you just want to be back right with God and and you want to make sure that you're a part of this great blessing, um, this blessing of salvation, this blessing of removal of your enemies and the blessing of the Lord on your household, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I've gotten off track, Lord. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I may know or I may not know where I went wrong, Lord God, but I say, forgive me, God. Forgive me of my sins. I confess my sins to you right now. Lord Jesus, have your way in my life. Lead me back onto that narrow path, Lord, that is with you. Hold my hand, Holy Spirit, and lead me home. In Jesus' name I pray. I want you to be my Lord, Lord over me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe those prayers, then the Holy Spirit is in you and he's there to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. Um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys. And then last but not, not least, uh, make sure you go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. All right, you guys take care and be blessed.